Their eyes were watching God. Alashma. Zora Neale Hurston's Their Eyes Were Watching God was published near the tail end of the modernist movement. Is it just like all other modernist works? Or is there something a bit different going on here? What the heck is a modernist work anyway? Well, let's start there. Laser beams and flying cars? Not even close. Modernism is a literary movement that reached its peak between 1890 and 1940. It's bleak stuff for the most part, often conveying the idea that life is chaotic and futile and everything must come to an end. These aren't books about robotic dogs. They're books about robotic dogs dying, painfully, alone. Or worse, robotic dogs never even existing. So on the one hand, Their Eyes Were Watching God fits right in among modernist writers' search for comfort amid existential struggles. What is the meaning of life? Just as T.S. Eliot searched for spiritual post-war comfort in the wasteland. Why does all watermelon flavored candy taste the same, but none of it tastes like real watermelon? Eyes combines a personal quest for love with larger historical issues like racism, slavery, and the oppression of women. And hurricanes. Yeah, everyone hates hurricanes. Oh, come on, guys. On the other hand, there's something else about modernism it's very monochromatic. You see, modernism is mostly populated with white males. Zora Neale Hurston is、uh, neither. Janie's problems as a black woman don't fall under the category of stuff white people like. Go on, get. They don't even fall under the category of stuff white people in the 1920s cared about. Why does he even bother? The stuffy modernists were more Renaissance than Harlem Renaissance. Come on, Hardy. Let's go to this one. In that sense, Janie's story isn't the same as Ezra Pound's, Eliot's, or Thomas Hardy's. Eliot was too busy cramming as many confusing words as possible into the wasteland to be bothered with race relations and gender oppression. What is another word for lamentation? And Pound and Hardy were probably shopping for、uh, sweater vests. Oh, look at my new vest! Or maybe we just need a different perspective here. Perhaps the narrow lens of modernism isn't the right way to look at this novel. Hurston wasn't just trying to overcome spiritual emptiness. She was trying to overcome the double oppression of being black and being a woman in the early 20th century. These were issues that no one who wasn't black and female cared about. So it was quite a weight on her shoulders. Remember, this is only 50 years after slavery ended. She might have been a modernist, but at the same time, she was challenging the modern emphasis placed on white men and white male problems. So, is this book like all other modernist works because it deals with depressing existential conflicts? Or is it in a different category because it discusses problems that your typical white male modernist couldn't care less about? Or is Hurston a modernist who is challenging other modernists? Come up amongst yourselves. Don't let the robot dogs die. Go on, get.